Did anybody want to see Evil Morty again? Did anybody want to see that guy? Did you want to see that guy? I wanted to see that guy. Hello, friends. I'm the man you may know as Z here with Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I'm here to talk about Season, f well, Season 7, Episode 5 of Rick and Morty, perhaps the best of the season so far. And uh, depending on where you fall on the spectrum, do you, if you listen to my previous video here about Rick and Morty, you may understand now that the writers feel pressed against the corner they're backed into a corner dan Harmon, resentful full of spite against the fans now says you wanted to see twisted and and gory i'm gonna give it to you you want lore i'm gonna give it to you i'm gonna give it right back to you just as a reminder if you want to hear more of this type of content please like and subscribe i often find myself watching videos and forgetting to give them that thumbs up that helps that channel and subscribing just helps us grow. We do appreciate it. But, so, I've seen a lot of breakdowns of this video. Well, breakdowns. I've, 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 everybody wants to review the overall message, but I think there's a couple things that are missing. So let's talk about the episode a little bit. It's a cold open of, essentially, the what what Evil Morty is up to now. And what I think is, is interesting is... And it's all summed up in, in one sentence. His robot butler goes to him. He goes, how does it, or how is the, um, how did you survive the, the terrors of the infinite, sir? Or how are the horrors of the infinite? So Morty, evil Morty, extricated himself from the Rick, you know, uh, universe, the, the Rick, infinite Rick curve. And what he's come to find is that he lives completely outside of time and space where the infinite is possible. And that's all that happens. Just anything. There's portals everywhere. Things combine together. Nothing makes sense. The world is horrible and dreadful, yet it's still better than being confined to space where you have a predestined life with Rick, which I think is interesting that Evil Morty is perfectly fine living like that, except now our Rick has interfered with him once again. <laughs> and I, I actually like the difference in the voices between the Mortys. I, I like that there's a subtle difference between the two. And I, this is the best we've seen with evil Morty. There's only been a shadow lurk. You know, he's only been a character lurking in the shadows, but this time we actually get an idea of what his motivations are, what he's looking for. And he's looking to just be left alone, but Rick can't do that. So Rick is impinging on his space Apparently, he has tucked himself just inside or just outside of the the Rick, Infinite Rick universe. And it's uh, somehow draining power from him. So he has to go and fix it. So Rick is mindlessly trying to find Rick Prime, his primary mission since this whole thing started. And uh, they do give you that little bit of insight where he captured, this is how he went through and he killed all the other Ricks and how he started capturing the Mortys all just to get himself out. You know, he's trying to break out of this prison that he feels like Rick created for him. So he goes and, he, and um, they find, they're, they're checking for Rick's and Evil Morty is one step ahead of, of Rick, which is interesting. You know, we think of Rick, our Rick is that he thinks he's the God, that he's the greatest, but clearly Evil Morty and Rick Prime are ahead of the curve. And there's an interesting uh, interaction later where it seems like Rick Prime is... It, I'm not sure which Morty he thinks is his Morty because all the timelines have gotten me confused because um, the original Rick and Morty left their original timeline. But again, this Rick Prime is accusing Rick of moving into his house, living in his garage, living with his family, and then Rick Prime... Um, cause they, they end up, get, it's a trap when he, he finds Rick, he finds Rick prime. It's actually a trap and he gets sucked into this death trap with all these other Mortys. And then they see that there's a robot that's been made of, uh, of, of Rick's wife and they get through all that. I mean, this, this episode is chocked full of stuff. Action packed, just kept going nonstop. 
And I thought every second, I thought it was great. I didn't think it was hilarious, but I really, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. So then we get to um, Rick goes off on his own because he's always wanted to, you know, do he's he's got to solve this on his own. He doesn't want any help. And <laughs> Evil Morty made this was funny. Evil Morty makes a joke about, oh, you think you're the only one who can undercut people because he just shows up in the portal, and he's like, why'd you bring Morty along? And he's like, I'm not worried about Morty. So. Uh, Rick Prime, they get into their final cataclysmic fight between Rick Prime and Rick, and it takes Evil Morty to take out Rick, uh, because Rick doesn't believe, he underestimates Evil Morty, he's like, oh, you're the clever one, huh? And, uh, I thought that dialogue was really interesting, where Evil Morty tricks him by pretending to be stupid Morty, and that's where I'm not sure which Morty is which, is, is Evil Morty the Morty, the is that Rick Prime's Morty, or is it our Morty? And I'm I'm still not 100 percent sure. I've watched it twice, and uh, you know it's been seven seasons, so it's a little hard for me to to remember. But if you remember, let me know in the comments below which Rick you think belongs to which Rick. Obviously, uh, once Evil Morty turns the tables on them, they have a conversation, and what Evil Morty is really after, and I thought their motivations were interesting, is this. This Omega weapon, Omega weapon to the to the <laughs> into to the inferior or the whatever he calls them, the uh, inferiors or, or what have you. He's like I, Rick's like I heard it from an inferior. So he's he he gets the data for the uh, this inf this bomb that kills you. If it kills you, it kills you in all the timelines. Uh, and they use it on on Uncle Slow, which I thought was ridiculous. <laughs> they kill Uncle Slow Mo in all these different dimensions, and it even hurts Rick Prime, which I thought was funny. So then, uh, Evil Morty takes all of that data, and then Rick beats Rick, uh, you know, our Rick Sanchez beats Rick Prime to death with his fists. Uh, an interesting comeuppance to the whole thing. And then this is where the I, I like some of the philosophical quandaries that come up. What do you do when you no longer have a purpose? Rick no longer has a purpose. And Evil Morty learned that lesson a long time ago, which I thought was interesting. Evil Morty says he doesn't want the device to be used, uh, mostly because he's afraid that Prime Rick may potentially kill Morty and then eventually would actually kill him. But he also said he's like, there's no reason for me. It, he's like, I'm not looking to find an evil summer to come hunt me down. He's like, that's not what I'm looking for. Because he even says to Rick, he's like, how do you feel now? Do you feel satisfied? He's like, feels the way it always does. It feels like nothing. And Rick finally has one of his last walls fall down where he has no purpose in life. He realizes that Rick Prime, you know, it, w this was also interesting that Rick Prime already enacted the bomb once where he killed Rick's wife in every universe that was, there are no, his wife isn't in other universes. She's only, she's gone completely from the universe. And that's where, you know, they leave Rick where everything is just noise now. He's there, but he's not really there. He's not really present, even though he's been working on himself. And I just thought, wow, has this bit of, angsty writing where did this come from where was this in the past three seasons what what did you do with dan Harmon? where have you given what have you accomplished so uh let's look at the article a little bit here because i feel like i've been describing this for a long time we had nothing cool to look at but the two biggest villains of the show and we've barely even seen rick prime show up in this one and i just i thought this was a turn for evil morty um that was pretty awesome. I really enjoyed. He's one of my favorite characters. I'm sure he's one of one of yours too. But I just thought it was fascinating to see his his story from you know from his perspective, and then him being as jaded as he was at the end, where he's like, "Look, there's nothing. There's no. There's no satisfaction at the end of this path. You you only get to live with yourself." And Evil Morty seems pretty content with that. He just doesn't want to be controlled. So I, I thought that was pretty uh, pretty cool. And then what is Rick going to do with himself? Is Rick going to fall into a depression and, and not be able to move on? I'll be pretty curious as to where they go with all this. 
And some people have been complaining about this, and I, I don't necessarily... I feel like this season's been kind of on point because it's been tying together some of the canon stuff. Um, and it also, it kind of retconned Evil Morty in, in a way, which, which I thought... Because I didn't like the episode where I think last season where we're like, we finally got what evil Morty was up to, but we didn't get anything from evil Morty. We didn't like really understand his character, but now in this, you get a better idea of, of what evil Morty is doing and why he does it. And his motivation, it wasn't just like, we're giving you the lore so we can give you the lore. They're like, no, we have to think of why are we doing this? Um, and I don't know why they're comparing this to The Last of Us 2. There's there's plenty of other things you can you can compare it to, but I guess it's just the most recent thing, and, and they all love The Last of Us 2, that exacting vengeance for a loved one doesn't make the grief any easier to process. It just doesn't. And I, I thought that was an interesting message. It makes you, you know, his whole purpose was, you know, so that he could spend more time hunting Rick Prime, you know, there, there, some of the episodes where he develops the robots and he develops all these other things and, and Morty hints at it, like you've been spending a lot of time in the sub-basement. Well, the sub-basement is where he goes to hunt him down and he had he had to, you know, he throws the switch at the end of the episode and he shuts down like all his like crime boards and everything he's looking for them. So I thought this was really good, really, really good. Um, they and that's but the but the interesting thing is it gives they're, they're claiming you know it doesn't really break the fourth wall but it does give the fans what they want but i like the fact that they're not giving us exactly what we want they're trying to give a message in it that's their message i'm okay with dan Harmon writing like this if he's going to keep it up where you know i i was saying to somebody who was a fan of the show you know when they got that deal to get you know 100 seasons 99 years of rick and morty they kind of sat on their laurels and they let some of their good writers go, which is fine. They can grow and do things, but Dan Harmon was still ultimately responsible for the show and he cut Justin Roiland off and the show kind of fell into more of a parody of itself where he's explaining his circle jerk of writing trains and how awesome of a writer he is and, and how to follow the train. And, you know, that's somebody who's just resting on their laurels. But now that he, I think he feels pressure. I think he feels intimidated by what he needs to do. And he's harnessing those negative energies into a better show. And I'll take it. You need to have a little bit of struggle to make something good. So uh, he made Rick and Morty after he got canned from Community because he needed to do something. And he had, you know, wanted to strike out. And I think he used the, that same energy there. So what did you guys think? Good episode, bad episode? Nobody really summarizes the plot. Not that there is much of a plot, but I thought this was a banger. Slam a damn a ding dong. I really, really liked it. Home run, probably my top five episodes of all time. Citadel Ricks might be number one. What did you guys think? Are you still into the show? Um, has this brought you back to it? I know a lot of fans fled once Dan Harm or once they fired Justin Roiland. I think it was before that with the two previous seasons that were just garbage and the episodes were virtually unwatchable. They had maybe one or two good episodes in a season and the rest of it was just trash. So let me know what you think. I do appreciate you catching us. We do have a live stream. You can catch that too. You can catch us on uh iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all those great places. Come hang with us. We love all y'all, but I'm on to the next one.